Thank you, Daisha, and welcome everyone to the surgical illustration presentations for the class of 2024. We're thrilled that you're here and also are glad that we have a remote audience online. So welcome to everyone. <clears throat> I'm Corey Sandone. I'm the director of the Department of Art as Applied to Medicine and the course director for surgical illustration. Our seven students have each seen dozens of surgeries during this course. Uh, they've illustrated two procedures. You'll see a full series of pencil sketches for the procedures, and then they'll show you some finished artwork. Uh, they also uh, repurposed one of the procedures for a lay audience, so you may see some of those images included in their presentations. Uh, faculty, in addition to the um, obviously beautiful artwork, our faculty are focused on the accuracy, clarity, and effectiveness of the didactic illustrations that the students will present today. I would like to welcome our first presenter, Grace Herzberg. All right, thank you, Corey. It's great to see everyone both in person and online. So my first surgery I'll be presenting to you today is a supinator nerves to anterior interosseous nerve transfer performed by Dr. Sami Tufaha. In this case, the anterior interosseous nerve in their left arm is damaged, resulting in loss of hand function such as gripping. The functional supinator nerves are co-apted with the non-functional anterior interosseous nerve to restore use of the hand. First, an incision is made along the antecubital crease and following the tendon of the pronator teres muscle. In one, the posterior interosseous nerve, which I'll refer to as the PIN, is neuralized, and in two, the supinator nerves are separated from the PIN. Next, in three, the median nerve is neuralized. In four, the anterior interosseous nerve, which I'll refer to as the AIN, is separated from the median nerve. In five, the anterior interosseous nerve is sharply transected proximally. As seen in six, this creates sufficient length for the AIN to be passed deep to the brachial artery and placed on a blue background beside the PIN. The surgeon completes the task pictured in seven using a, a microscope. In seven A, the supinator nerves are transected distally. Epineurial sutures anchor the supinator nerves to the AIN. In 7b, a piece of fascia harvested from the antebrachium is folded over the co-opted nerves and fibrin sealant is applied. Finally, H shows the completed co-optation. For my journal layout and final renders, I combined multiple figures to summarize the procedure. Figure A shows the dissection of the supinator nerves and B shows the transection of the AIN. Then figure C shows transection of supinator nerves. Figure D schematically illustrates epineurial sutures. And figure E shows the co-optation in context with relevant anatomy pictured. I now open the floor to any questions. Uh, please go ahead and raise your hand high so I can see you. Okay. Uh, sorry, quick technical difficulties. Thank you, Tisha. Yes, Lydia. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here? Yeah, that's good. I really appreciate it. It's just the end of the question. For those of you who are watching here, we have a question for you, which is this assistance. This is part of the other question. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Lydia. The feedback was really helpful. David? I just want to comment on the use of the space and the layout. We have a restricted space, but there's a lot in between the surgery and the vision. It appears to be set very nicely. We use the space on the layout uh, very well. We incorporate some spacing so it's not too crowded. And we can show a lot of very nice space. Thanks, David. You are a great advisor. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Juan? Grace, I, I want to commend you. It's a really great, glowing illustration. Uh, very clear the steps. Um, mm -hmm. A minor uh, observation that uh, done a great job with the, let's say, the percent scissors and Mm -hmm. To the right here. Um, so my suggestion would be perhaps consider purposely where you're placing the gates and pieces sure. to guide or eye to what action might be better, let's say, for A to place that cell supernator on the earth right above the scissor mm -hmm. so that it's right at the top action or point to the scissor. Also, pointing to the right here, this B could be above that transecting item. That's the main point. C, the placement of the B and cross comes with the top of the slot. By putting it up, maybe perhaps they could have a different place for C, directly pointing to the C. So this is a subtle visual cues of the recommended eyes to bring up. Yeah, thank you. That's a really thoughtful suggestion. Yeah, I'd love to discuss that. Um, so just to repeat the question to summarize, uh, the question is about what this blue fabric is that you can see underneath of the AIN and PIN in C and E. So just to zoom in a little better. Um, so this is placed during the procedure uh, so that the correct nerves are more visible um, against, you can imagine there's a lot of chaos going on like throughout a surgery. Uh, the blue background provides a nice um, backdrop so that all the nerves can be very precisely identified, uh, especially under the microscope. That's a cool question. Thank you. Lydia. Appreciate that. Tim? I'll make a quick comment. I'll say it loud. Okay. <laughs> if you're in the you said they were constructed by cutting off the length of those vessels and nerves. I think sometimes uh, labeling can kind of get confusing. And the fact that you just need to have those nerves and appreciate exactly what those are. It's nicely done. Thank you, Tim. All right, thank you so much for all your questions.
and columns. I'll go ahead and move on to the second procedure. The second procedure I illustrated is a total hysterectomy with a bilateral salpingectomy performed by Dr. Harold Wu. As an overview, two procedures were performed here. A total hysterectomy where both the uterus and cervix are removed and a bilateral salpingectomy where the fallopian tubes are removed and the ovaries are left intact in the body. This robotic procedure was performed with the patient in dorsal lithotomy Trendelenburg position. Ports were placed in an M shape, three eight millimeter ports and a five millimeter accessory port. Then the camera was inserted in the umbilical port. In two, a uterine manipulator was placed to protect the vagina during the procedure. For the following operative steps, the camera's looking towards the feet. In three, the mesosalpinx is divided. Then in four, the fallopian tube is divided at the corneal insertion of the uterus and removed from the abdomen. In five, the uterine ovarian ligament is divided. In six, the round ligament is divided. This provides access to the anterior and posterior leaves of the broad ligament in seven. The anterior broad leaf is incised toward the vesicovaginal space. In eight, the vascular pedicle containing the uterine artery and vein is partially skeletonized. In nine, the ascending branch of the vascular pedicle is coagulated and divided. This preserves the descending branches feeding the vagina. Next, in 10, the vascular pedicle is lateralized so that an anterior copotomy is performed. At this juncture, the uterus and cervix are removed through the vagina using a uterine manipulator. And finally, in 12, the vaginal cuff is closed in two layers of VLOC continuous suture, then fibrin sealant is applied. The final render is created for slide and combines multiple figures showing the anatomical relationship between the anterior and posterior leaves of the broad ligament, as well as where the vascular pedicle is incised. I now open the floor to any questions or comments. Tim. Mm -hmm. I was taken by the clarity that you presented in your sketches. You have good accent outlining, hierarchy with the labels, what moment you're speaking to the particular structure. And so I would encourage you to you know, Use that to your advantage moving forward. Mm -hmm. You've got the skills and the tools for these presentations. Oftentimes it is about the pretty picture. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very important. Thank you, Tim. So it's very important that everyone uses the microphone in the audience space. That's so the uh, audience online can hear you and questions can come up with them. Thank you. This comment has to do with layout thinking, um, but also the consideration of the focus of the viewer. And I really appreciate how you consider the value of the less important areas. Mm -hmm. and enough detail in those areas to give the overall views their bearings, but you really drop it back and think you've done a great job of highlighting those areas that come up. Thank you, David. Lydia? Thank you, Lydia. I appreciate all your guidance throughout the surgery uh, illustration course as well. Um, and for everyone who'd like to look at the pieces after, we have them all displayed in the lobby too, if you want to see the full value range. All right, so thank you so much for all of your questions. 
Now I would love to introduce my classmate, Chloe Wooden. Good afternoon. Today I'll be presenting two surgical procedures, starting with a microvascular decompression for trigeminal neuralgia performed by Dr. Christopher Jackson. This procedure is used to treat severe facial pain that arises from a blood vessel in the brain compressing the trigeminal cranial nerve, depicted here in figure one. This procedure involves mobilizing the offending vessel away from the nerve to relieve the compression. Figure two shows the incision line behind the ear passing over the transverse sigmoid sinus junction in preparation for a retromastoid craniectomy. In figure three, we see the craniectomy being performed. In A, two burr holes are made near the transverse sigmoid sinus junction. In B, the bone between the burr holes is removed with a drill and cutting burr. In this case, a cranioplasty using synthetic bone cement will be used to repair the opening, so a bone flap is not preserved. In C, a rongeur is used to enlarge the opening to the border of the sigmoid sinus. In figure four, the dura is carefully pierced and a curvilinear incision is made. In figure five, we see an orienting view with the relevant anatomy highlighted. In figure six, we see the surgeon's view. The dural flap is held open with sutures and the lateral cerebellum is retracted. The steps in figure seven were performed using a microscope and the illustration shows a magnified view. In A, the arachnoid matter is opened and the trigeminal nerve is mobilized using a dissector. In B, the, uh, the arachnoid surrounding the superior cerebellar artery or the SCA is loosened and the loop of the SCA is mobilized away from the trigeminal nerve. In C, shredded Teflon is packed between the SCA and the nerve, preventing further contact. And in D, we see the final result where the superior cerebellar artery is successfully held away from the trigeminal nerve. For my final illustration, I chose to combine and render figures five, six, and seven formatted for journal publication. Here is an enlarged version of figures A and B depicting an orienting anatomical view and the surgeon's view. And here, figures C through F show the series of maneuvers that resolved the compression. Thank you, and I will now take any questions or comments. Jenny? Um, but these funnels, but the one thing I want 